In this video, we want to talk about the squeeze or sandwich theorem. Suppose we have a function like g of x, which is trapped between the two functions like f of x and h of x. Similar to this picture, graph of g of x, as you can see here, is trapped between the two functions f of x and h of x. Now, if the limit of the below function and limit of the above function will be equal to each other at a point, then the limit of the middle function, which in this case is g of x, should be the same value. For example here, because limit of the function f of x as x approaches a equals to limit of the function h of x, the top function, as x approaches a, and these two values are equal to each other and they equal L. So the limit of g of x, which is squeezed between the two other functions, should be also L. So we can use a squeeze theorem whenever we have a function that is squeezed between. So we can use a squeeze theorem when we have a function that is between the two other functions and limit of the left and right function are equal to each other then the limit of the middle function should also be the same value as you can see in this picture limit of the function f of x as x approaches a equals l and limit of the function h of x also when x approaches a is l and so it makes sense that limit of the function g of x, which is between these two functions, is also L. Let me show you by some examples how we can use a squeeze theorem for solving limit questions. And when we need a squeeze theorem for finding limits. Suppose f of x is a function between 4x minus 11 and x squared minus 4x plus 5. The question is find limit of the function f of x as x approaches 4. Because the function f of x lies between two other functions, we are using squeeze theorem for finding limit of f of x because we have no idea what is the function of f of x. So in no way we can find limit of f of x as x approaches 4. But because we know that f of x is between these two functions, we can find limit of those functions, and maybe after that we can apply a squeeze theorem for finding limit of f of x. But let's see what is the limit of the two function in the left and in the right limit of 4x minus 11 as x approaches 4 equals to 4 times 4 minus 11 4 times 4 is 16 minus 11 is 5. now let's find the limit of the right side function limit of x to minus 4x plus 5 as x approaches 4. Again, by direct substitution, we have 4 squared minus 4 times 4 plus 5, which equals 5. Now, because the limit of the left function and limit of the right function exist and are the same, based on the squeeze theorem, We can say that limit of the function f of x as x approaches 4 also should be 5. Another example. If g of x, x plus cosine of x and x squared plus x plus 1 
what is the limit of function g as x approaches 0. Again, because we have no idea what is the function of g, we are using a squeeze theorem to answer this question. First, we have to find the limit of left function and right function as x approaches 0. Limit of x plus cosine of x as x approaches 0 can be evaluated by a simple direct substitution. If we plug in 0 for x, we get 0 plus cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, so this limit equals 1. Now we have to find limit of the right side function as x approaches 0. If we plug in 0 for x, for finding limit, the limit equals 1. Now because the limit of the left function and limit of the right function exist and are equal to each other based on squeeze theorem we can conclude that limit of middle function or g of x as x approaches 0 is also 1. Now look at this example. We want to find limit of x squared sine of 1 over x as x approaches 0. This example is the most famous example that can be solved with the squeeze theorem. But how we can solve this? Note that here we have a limit. How we can find out? We have to use squeeze theorem to answer this question. Note that you cannot find this limit by direct substitution because if you want to plug in 0 for x, in here, you will get 1 over 0, which is undefined. And so you cannot find this limit by direct substitution. But how we can use squeeze theorem for finding this limit? In such questions that you have a trigonometric function like sine or cosine, you have to start with that part of the limit. You have to start from sine or cosine part of the limit. From trigonometry, we know that sine of any angle, sine of any expression, or cosine of any expression is always between negative 1 and 1. So, sine of 1 over x is also always between negative 1 and 1. Now, by multiplying this relation by x2, we get to this expression. If we multiply left side by x2, we get negative x2. In the middle, if we multiply by x2, we have x2 sine of 1 over x. And in the right side, we get x2. The reason that we multiply both sides by x2 is that we want to make our middle function here similar to our question that we had. Now, our complicated function, which is x2 sine of 1 over x, is trapped between two simple functions, negative x2 and x2. So we use a squeeze theorem for finding the limit of the middle function. First, we are, we are trying to find limit of left and right function. Limit of negative x2, when x approaches 0, by a simple direct substitution is 0. And limit of the right function x2 as x approaches 0 is also 0. Now based on squeeze theorem the limit of x2 sine of 1 over x as x approaches 0 is also 0. Let me show you another example. Limit of 
radical x times by cosine of pi over x plus sine of pi over x as x approaches 0 from the right. We want to find this limit. First note that by direct substitution we cannot find this limit. If we plug in 0 for x, pi over 0 here and here will be undefined. And so by direct substitution we cannot find this limit. Again, similar to the previous question, we have to start from the trigonometric part of this limit. We know that sine of any angle and cosine of any angle lies between negative 1 and 1. And so, because sine of pi over x and cosine of pi over x is between negative 1 and 1, so sine of pi over x plus cosine of pi over x is between negative 2 and 2. By adding these two inequalities that we had, we get to this relation. Sine of pi over x plus cosine of pi over x is always between negative 2 and 2. Now, by multiplying this relation by radical x, we get to this relation. Negative 2 square root of x is less than equals radical x times sine of pi over x plus cosine of pi over x. And this is less than 2 square root of x. Note that when you want to multiply an inequality by something, you have to make sure that that expression is positive. Otherwise, maybe you have to flip your inequality. But here, because the square root of x is always positive, we are not worried about that. But make sure always that when you want to multiply your relation by something, that expression should be positive. And if it is negative, don't forget to flip your inequality. Now we use a squeeze theorem for finding our limit. First, we find limit of negative 2 square root of x as x approaches 0 from the right. If you plug in 0, negative 2 times square root of 0 will be 0. We know that square root of 0 is 0. And limit of the right function is also 0. If you plug in 0, square root of 0 is 0. 0 times 2 is 0. Because the limit of the left function and right function are equal to each other, so the limit of the middle function, which is radical x times sine of pi over x plus cosine of pi over x, is also 0. And the reason that in this question x approaches 0 only from the right is that we have a square root of x and x in the square root cannot be negative. So that's the reason that this limit only exists when x approaches 0 from the right. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you like this video, please subscribe. And see you in the next videos.